Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, in this video I'm going to show you how to make an awesome little network hi-fi media streamer uh, using a Raspberry Pi 3, the official Raspberry Pi screen, and an awesome little add-on board called the Raspberry Play 4. So let's do a quick overview of what we have here guys. Um, this is the completed unit. Uh, you can see we've got some RCA leads coming out the top which are plugging into some M audio speakers on my bench here. And you've got the power lead coming out of the top as well. Um, this is the Rune audio interface. Uh, this is the playback pane which shows the artist and track information at the top. On the left you've got your tracker for where we are within the track as well as your shuffle and uh, repeat buttons. And on the right we've got our volume control and these are all touch sensitive so you can modify those on the fly. On the left hand pane here, the Raspberry Pi screen is not the most uh, positive in the world, but there we go. Um, you've got the any network mounts that you've added. You can see I haven't added any on this system thus far. You've got USB storage, which I've got a USB plugged in just to demo this for you guys. Uh, you can add any online radio services, so if you've got a favourite radio station, you can go onto their website and find out what the URL is for their stream and add it there. Uh, and you can also connect to Spotify, uh, Derbal, which is an online repository for free radio stations, and Jamendo, which is a, a similar thing but for uh, unsigned artists and the like. And then further down we've got uh, all these sources can be amalgamated into a database and you can view by album, artist or genre. So we'll go back to the playback screen here. And uh, I've got these plugged into these M Audio desktop speakers. Now it's not the greatest quality in the world, but I'll just demo for you. Uh, the sound quality that you'll get. I can vouch that uh, using the Raspberry Play board and plugging into a, a semi-decent hi-fi system you are getting uh, sound quality from a, a lossless file like FLAC uh, that's equivalent to the original CD recording. So uh, you just have to take my word for it. You wouldn't hear uh, on this recording anyway, but just a demo. So I'm not sure how helpful that will be. Um, as I say, the uh, speakers I've got here and the microphone setup are, are not the best in the world. You're probably not going to hear the, the high fidelity uh, that I'm hearing in the room. Um, but that's okay. I'm sure if you built one of these, you'll find out for yourself. Um, so without any further ado, guys, um, let's go ahead and do the physical build on this. And then I'll come back and give you some final thoughts. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need, obviously, is a Raspberry Pi. This is a Model 3. Um, but there's no reason you couldn't use an older one. The reason I've gone for this is it's got built-in Wi-Fi um, and uh, it's just going to be a bit faster because it's a more modern piece of hardware. Uh, we're also going to need our Raspberry Play 4 board um, which is going to sit on top of our Raspberry Pi using the input-output ports here. Um, and because I've got one, you wouldn't necessarily need to do this because you can run this uh, Rune Audio solution headless but I already had a, an official Raspberry Pi screen uh, sitting around so I'm going to use that uh, and because I'm using the screen I'm going to have to use a case uh, that is compatible. This isn't an official case, uh, it's got a little back plane that sits here and uh, I already know that I'm going to have to modify this because of the extra height from the Raspberry Play board uh, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Now uh, if I was just using the Raspberry Pi and the, the Rune, uh, sorry the Raspberry Play board uh, and running the solution headless from my phone, then I would probably get away with using the official Raspberry Pi power supply. It's rated to 2.4 amps, which is more than enough to run a headless Raspberry Pi and the Raspberry Play board. Um, but because I'm running the screen as well, and the screen would normally be powered from the same headers that the Raspberry Play board is going to be powered from, I'm going to have to use a separate USB uh, adapter. Now this one's got two USB ports which I hope you can see there. So what I'm going to do is uh, one of these is going to run just the screen because it has as well as taking power from the Raspberry Pi it can take a feed from a micro USB uh, and the other one's going to run the Raspberry Pi and the Raspberry Play 4 board as well um, and each channel on this is rated to 2.4 amps so we know there's not going to be issues there. Uh, and we've got a couple of micro USB leads as well that we're going to use uh, to just to run power from that power supply to the various components. 
And lastly, I have misplaced somewhere my micro SD card. Here it is. Um, so the Raspberry Pi 3 uses a micro SD card. Earlier versions used a full side SD card, uh, but I've got an adapter as well because uh, I need to be able to put it into my PC to dump the software onto it. So let's get started with our build. Uh, the first thing I'm going to need to do is put my Raspberry Pi on my screen unit. And the way this connects is pretty cool. You've got this little header here on the Raspberry Pi and there's this ribbon cable that comes off of the screen. So we just uh, feed that in there. Lift the tab up. He says. It's a little bit fiddly. There we go. And then we push that little tab down and that's secured. Um, and then we just need to take the little screws, uh, the screwdriver, and we'll just secure that on there. You would normally have four screws, I've managed to lose one, but three will be good enough. Now we should be able to maneuver our case onto the board. In fact, what I'll do first is I'll add the Raspberry Play board on because I know I'm going to have a fit issue. So it'll help me to see where I need to cut on this case. So it does stack quite nicely, I think you agree, that looks pretty cool. You know, stacks pretty well. You would normally use uh, some metal or nylon standoffs here, uh, but I don't have any to hand. But because my case is going to encapsulate these connectors and stop it moving too much, it's not too much of an issue for me, I don't think. So, no, that's not going to go. Oh, no. So, I can't get this case on because, as you can see, the... Uh, the connectors here are fouling on this case, so what I'm going to do is go and find a little Dremel tool and uh, cut some material out here and then hopefully this will slide on nicely. I'll be right back. So uh, that took a little bit longer than I thought it was going to, but uh, we're pretty much there. I've kept as much material as I could on the case. Um, let's cut a little part away. You can see just there from the lid to get the lid to snap on. And uh, on the front there, I have to bevel out a little bit to get the RCA connectors through. And the, the mini jack as well, which uh, I've not considered. So uh, we're on, we're in, we fit. So uh, next step is. Uh, screw the back onto this case, so let's just get the screws, get these bits of plastic off my arms. Got a horrible feeling I'm going to be finding bits of plastic all over my workshop for the next two or three weeks. Let's just get all these in nice and loose before we tighten them up. So that's our hardware build done. As we can see here, we've got uh, our RCA, which is going to go to our stereo. We've got the micro USB here that's going to feed the Raspberry Pi and the Raspberry Play board. And then we've got another micro USB just here. I'm not sure if you guys can see that, which is going to power just the screen. So that's the hardware done. I'll do a little bit of tidying up and then we'll switch to the PC and I'll show you what we need to do software wise to get this up and running. Okay guys, uh, sorry about the shaky cam work. My screen capture software has decided to stop working. Um, but what we're gonna do now is download the Rune Audio software. So if you go to runeaudio.com in your browser and then go to download and scroll down until you find the version for your specific device. So for me, that's the Raspberry Pi 3 and click download latest version. Now to save time, I've already done that. I've got it saved here on my desktop. So the next thing you need to do is open a program called Win32 Disk Imager, uh, which if you've used a Raspberry Pi before, you'll be surely familiar with. 
and then you go to the little file browse icon here and you select the appropriate image and then I don't have an SD card installed at the moment but your SD card would appear here the drive letter make sure you get the uh, correct drive letter don't go overwriting any external drives or anything that you've got connected uh, and then you would hit right down here at the bottom and depending on the speed of your drive and the size of it uh, it should take about 10-15 minutes to write the card and once the card's done we've just got to make a couple of quick changes and we'll be good to go okay so now that the uh, software has been put onto our SD card we can browse to the device and see all the files on there but before we uh, take that card out and stick it in our Raspberry Pi and run it for the first time we need to make one quick change to the config.txt file now this is the file that the Rune Audio software uses to look at different configuration options and we're going to enable the Raspberry Play 4 option so that we can then change it from the system interface. So we're going to right click on this and we're going to open it with WordPad and then we'll get our config file and we're going to press Ctrl and F on our keyboard and then type in IQ Audio which you can see I've already done and hit find next and it's going to show us in that file where that text is. Now in a file like this you'll see lots of hashtags at the beginning of a line and what that symbolizes is that that line's not actually being read by the software at present it's generally a comment for us or it's a configuration option that's been left deselected which is what's happened here now these are all different types of add-on board for a raspberry pi that give different audio outputs and we need to uncomment this one at the bottom so that the raspberry play board is seen by our system and what that does is basically tell the software on boot up when it reads this file actually you do need to pay attention to this line and act in a certain way and you'll see when we come to use the software that what that means is that in the settings option we have the option to use this uh, interface as well as the onboard audio so I'm going to go ahead and save that and then once it's saved we can close and we can eject our card and put it in a Raspberry Pi ready for our first boot up. Okay guys, so the last couple of things we need to do before we have a working system is just do a little bit of setup. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to activate the Raspberry Play board. So we click on the menu button in the top right and select MPD using the touch screen. And you can see the top uh, option here is audio output interface. We're gonna select that drop down and you'll see the IQ audio DAC is there so we'll select that and then we will scroll down and hit save and apply and that's going to ensure that we're using the Raspberry Play audio interface rather than the onboard Raspberry, Play, Raspberry Pi audio interface uh, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to set our network up which I've already done but I'll show you how to do it you just go to the menu and select network uh, and then you'll be presented with the inbuilt Ethernet and if it's a Raspberry Pi 3 you'll have the wireless LAN as well. Now I would say if you're going to be streaming high fidelity files uh, and you have the option then definitely use the built-in cable connection rather than Wi-Fi uh, but for this demo I've got Wi-Fi selected now all you have to do is select Wi-Fi and it will scan for available networks and then you just select your network and put in the passkey and you will be done um, and then that's all the setup you need to do on this you should then be able to add any network shares that you've got uh, or plug in any USB devices and you're good to go so there you have it guys uh, I hope this video has been useful for you uh, just to give you a couple of final thoughts on this project because uh, in going through it there's, there's a couple of things that I wouldn't exactly do the same uh, chief amongst those is I wouldn't actually say that using the official Raspberry Pi screen is the way to go uh, now the reason for that is I didn't show you in the uh, setup stage but you can actually if you've got this connected to your network you can drive it headless and control it from a mobile device or anything with a web browser really so to give you an example uh, here's my mobile phone and all I've done is I've put the IP address of the device into my browser and you get the exact same interface uh, as you get on the screen here and uh, it's, it's pretty responsive um, so I wouldn't say that uh, it, it might look pretty having the screen there but I wouldn't say that it was actually a necessity and uh, in a sense because of all these trailing leads out the top it would be a lot neater solution just to uh, put this in a little aluminium enclosure or just use some sticky back tape to stick it to the back of your hi-fi cabinet and use the system that way I would not if I was doing this again be using the screen really I only included the screen in this build because I already had the screen uh, so there was no additional cost to me um, but other than that it's been a very very uh, 
entertaining project to do and also the result has been absolutely fantastic i'm very very happy uh, with the sound quality that i'm getting uh, not not in this setup um, these these power speakers are, are not the best but taking it home and plugging it into my home hi-fi system i've been very very impressed with the high fidelity sound that comes from the raspy play four board when compared to the onboard uh, interface that is part of the raspberry pi um, which if you've tried to use a Raspberry Pi for any sort of media stream before, I'm sure you've found that the, uh, the built-in audio is not the best. So um, definitely a project worth doing, guys. Um, I hope you found this video helpful. If you haven't, give it one of those. Uh, but if you have found it useful, please give it one of those. And please uh, consider subscribing. I'm going to be doing lots more Raspberry Pi project projects in the coming weeks. Thanks, guys.